Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So, uh, let us continue with our uh, discussion. Uh, uh, we were trying to uh, derive uh, uh, the important, uh, let us say, few important co consequences of the covering homotopy theorem. So, uh, all this was uh, uh, is part of our effort to understand uh, why uh, the fiber over each point uh, in the base space of a universal covering uh, is set theoretically bijective to the fundamental group of the base space and uh, uh, the other question was uh, why is it that uh, the fundamental group of the base space can be identified can be identified with a subgroup of automorphisms of the universal covering space so uh, uh, the key to understanding this is trying to understand the uh, the covering homotopy theorem okay so uh, i stated the covering homotopy theorem and i was de deriving consequences so let me uh, quickly recall uh, consequences of the covering homotopy theorem number 1 the first consequence was uh, the fact that if you take a covering space then uh, uh, the the image of the fundamental group of the covering space uh, can be uh, in the fundamental group of the base space uh, is isomorphic to the fundamental group of the covering space namely the the natural map uh, induced by uh, the functor uh, of forming fundamental groups uh, is injective okay so let me state that uh, if if p from x tilde to x is a covering space uh, and um, uh, x tilde is a point of capital X tilde with p of uh, x tilde is equal to x then the uh, uh, natural map na the natural group homomorphism p lower star from the first fundamental group of the space above the covering space based at the point x tilde to the first fundamental group of the base space based at the point x is injective. Therefore, you can identify <coughs> the first fundamental group of the covering space as a subgroup of the uh, first fundamental group of the base space okay and uh, if you recall i told you that uh, the formation of the fundamental group first fundamental group is is uh, what is called a functorial operation uh, which uh, transforms also a map uh, into a group home of some that's how you got this okay so uh, the injectivity was of course uh, derived using the covering homotopy theorem right so this and of course um, uh, in the case when uh, this is a universal covering uh, the, the space x tilde is simply connected so the fundamental group above is trivial so what you uh, get uh, as a subgroup of the fundamental group below is just a trivial subgroup okay so the, so the second consequence um, was uh, the existence of uh, uh, unique uh, the existence of unique path liftings okay so uh, so let me write that down existence so or rather i should say uh, uh, the uh, any covering space has unique path lifting property Uh, 
or let me say even covering map has the unique path lifting property what does this mean uh, so if i if i draw a diagram so you have um, you have x tilde here you have x here this is the this is the covering map the covering the so called covering projection and suppose i have a uh, i have a path in x so i is the closed unit interval uh, in the real line and suppose i have a path and suppose uh, um, the the path starts at the point x in x and suppose i am given a point x tilde which lies above the point x under the map p so p of x tilde is x okay then there exists there exists a unique path alpha tilde in x tilde which lies over alpha okay namely the uh, there is a path uh, uh, in x tilde with alpha tilde of uh, uh, 0 equal to x tilde namely starting at x at the point x tilde I have chosen and uh, such that if you project that path down you will get the path alpha projecting the path alpha tilde down gives you the path alpha okay. So in other words the path alpha uh, can be lifted to a path alpha tilde uh, provided of course uh, you, you fix a starting point uh, an initial point which has to of course lie over the starting point of alpha okay and that uh, so uh, um, the covering homotopy theorem tells you that you can certainly get this alpha tilde and I have told you earlier that uh, the, uh, the the property of this map being a local homeomorphism ensures that the uh, that the lifting is unique okay. So you get the unique path lifting property and this is very very important because um, as I told you the difference between uh, a subjective local homeomorphism and a covering map is precisely this unique path lifting property this path lifting property. So there is a uh, there is a statement that uh, you take uh, you take a subjective local homeomorphism and if you are sure that it has the uh, unique path lifting property the path lifting property then uh, you can uh, deduce from this that it is actually a covering map okay. So um, um, of course I should again uh, remind you that uh, in general we are always assuming that all our spaces are house of spaces they are all uh, uh, you know uh, arc wise connected locally arc wise connected and locally simply connected okay. So um, then we come to the third uh, consequence um, which uh, which is exactly uh, the uh, the one that is going to explain why the uh, fiber over each point uh, the inverse image of each point under cover under a universal covering map uh, is canonically bijective to the fundamental group below okay. So um, so let me write that down uh, the um, uh, uh, fixing um, rather I'll, let me not say fixing <coughs> for for a covering map. P from x tilde to x, uh, the fiber P inverse of x uh, for x in x, small x in capital X, can be canonically or let me say naturally identified with the coset space uh, pi 1 the fundamental group below uh, mod the image of the fundamental group above where of course uh, um, uh, small x tilde is a point lying over sm small x that is a point that is mapped by p to small x uh, so there is uh, the fiber can be identified with this uh, via the uh, natural uh, 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 orbit map 
uh, of uh, the point uh, orbit map for the point x filter. <coughs> So, um, so in particular, you know, if this was a universal covering, uh, then pi one x, uh, then this this is going to be a trivial subgroup, and uh, what it will tell me is that uh, every fiber, the fiber over each point, can be uh, naturally identified with the fundamental group of the base space based at that point. So you get a very nice picture, namely the picture of a universal covering uh, in this form. So let me again draw this picture this is universal covering um, to x so it looks it looks like this over each point x you put uh, pi 1 capital x comma small x if you take some other point x prime you put over that pi the fundamental group pi 1 capital x comma x prime and of course i am assuming capital x is uh, uh, so in this way i get all these fundamental groups and what you get is that the space x tilde uh, is a vibration the fibers are all uh, isomorphic because you know I am I am assuming the topological spaces are my, my topological spaces are all arcwise connected and then you know that uh, the fundamental groups at different points they are all isomorphic. So uh, you get this nice picture of uh, the universal covering space as some kind of uh, as a kind of uh, uh, what may be called a pi 1 bundle over uh, the base space x so it is a all the fibers are pi 1s and pi 1s of the base below uh, of the space below hmm. so um, um, so this is what I am we, we, we should uh, try to uh, now understand so for that I will uh, first begin by trying to explain uh, the idea of group actions of a set I will quickly recall so um, recall um, given a group a group capital G and a set capital S uh, a left action of uh, G on S is a map uh, G cross S to S uh, let me call this as mu uh, so it is written as G small g comma small s going to uh, mu of g comma s which is usually written as g dot s that is a notation okay such that um, uh, e dot s is equal to s uh, e uh, the identity element of g and of course uh, s is an element of s okay so this is one condition the second condition is g1 dot g2 dot s is g1 g2 dot s for g1 comma g2 belonging to g and of course s in s so this is the <coughs> notion of a group acting on a set uh, so what the first one tells is that uh, so basically this is this is a way I mean this is a method uh, of uh, trying to uh, take an element small s of the set capital S take an element of G and let this small g uh, operate on this small s to produce a new element of s <coughs> which is denoted as g dot s okay and uh, in this way if you give me an element of g uh, uh, given any element of s I am going to get another element of s okay. So uh, each element of G is going to induce a map from S to S, okay, and uh, uh, the definitions uh, will tell you that the the map that is induced is a bijective map, namely it's a permutation of S, okay. So uh, in fact, you can see that uh, uh, you know. Uh, so so let me write that down, um, but before that, let me explain these two points. Uh, the this uh, this this condition tells you that the identity element of the group simply does nothing okay it does not produce a new element okay and this one tells you that the the um, the way you form uh, the new element uh, is compatible with the group operation so this this g1 g2 is multiplication of the two elements g1 g2 in the group 
So, you multiply these two elements and then operate on s to get a new element of s okay or you do it uh, one at a time but you keep this order 1 followed by 2 in both cases then you should get the same result okay. So, uh, 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 the point is that uh, each element of g will give rise to a permutation of s okay. So, uh, each element of g g belonging to g gives rise to uh, a permutation of s namely you see uh, uh, in other words I have a map from g to permutations of s which is just g going to let me call this as mu sub g okay and what is this mu sub g mu sub g is the map from uh, s to s which simply takes s to g dot s okay and um, so every element of g uh, 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 gives rise to a permutation of s and why is it a permutation it is because of these it is because of these conditions okay. Uh, you can see that um, mu g uh, is surjective because if I start with uh, uh, an element of s if I start with s prime belonging to s uh, comes from uh, mu g of uh, g inverse <coughs> dot s prime okay. So, mu g of g inverse s prime is going to be just g dot g inverse dot s prime okay and uh, that is going to be uh, by this uh, by this condition I can put the g and g inverse together I will get e I will get e dot s prime and but but e dot s prime is just s prime. So, this will turn out to be s prime okay. So, it is mu g is certainly subjective and mu g is also injective because you know uh, mu g of s 1 is equal to mu sub g of s 2 will uh, will uh, will mean g dot s 1 is equal to g dot s 2 and then uh, I operate by g inverse on both sides. So, I will get g inverse dot g dot s 1 should be equal to g inverse of g dot s 2 uh, and uh, then again I combine this g inverse and g I will get e uh, by using this and this and that will tell you that s 1 equal to s 2. So, it is very clear that each mu g okay action of an element is going to produce a permutation of s and th in this way you are going to get a map from the group g uh, to uh, set of permutations and you this this condition also tells you that the permutation that you get corresponding to the identity element of g is just the identity map on s okay mu sub e is just the identity map on s okay because it simply does not do anything operating by e okay we when when we write g dot s we say g operates on this element s to produce a new element g dot s. So, when E operates on s it does not do anything it, it keeps s it returns s okay. So, mu E is identity of s uh, is identity map of s and now notice that uh, this map what you have on the left side is a group uh, which we started with the right side is also a group the set of permutations of a group uh, of, a, of a set uh, the, the set of permutations of on any set is a group under composition of mappings the composition of two permutations is again a permutation and uh, you know the inverse of permutation is also a permutation. So, uh, the beautiful thing is that this map is a group homomorphism okay. Uh, so, so if I maybe I will call this as uh, 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 psi sub mu psi sub mu is a group homomorphism. Say sub mu is a group homomorphism. Okay. So, um, so which means uh, um, the, so this this is something that you can easily check. So, uh, uh, in fact, uh, if you give me an action of a group on a set uh, mu, I'm getting a group homomorphism of G into a set of permutations into the group of permutations of that set, and uh, the converse is also true. If you give me a group homomorphism from G to uh, uh, the uh, group of permutations of s that is actually defining an action okay. So, conversely 
conversely given a group homomorphism uh, psi from g to permutations of s okay uh, um, so maybe I'll draw a, draw a small line here um, uh, the map g cross s to s mu sub psi defined by g comma s going to uh, uh, so this is sub mu sub psi and uh, uh, if you give me an element of g I get psi g is a permutation psi of g is a permutation on s and then I, I let it act on the element small s that will return an element of capital s okay. So uh, conversely given a group homomorphism you get a map and which is easily seen to be an action which is which is which uh, is easily seen to be an to be an action action uh, and uh, in fact uh, if I if I write down the psi sub mu for that you will get back uh, you will get back your uh, psi okay. So uh, uh, what I am trying to say is that I am just trying to tell you that giving a group action uh, as a map in this way with these properties is the same as giving a group homomorphism into the permutations uh, of that set okay fine. So um, uh, now uh, the, the the next thing that I want to tell you is um, um, about orbits. Okay, so uh, so let me say the following thing: um, uh, given given uh, uh, S in S, the orbit of S is the set G dot S. What is this G dot S? It's just it is just the set of all g, small g dot s where g varies in g. So you if, if you give me a single element you let g act on it a uh, various elements of g act on it to produce new elements and that is the orbit of that of that element okay and uh, what happens is that the set s is broken down uh, is partitioned into orbits and uh, it that means either two orbits uh, are the same or they are completely disjoint okay. So the set so you can check this the set S uh, is partitioned into uh, disjoint of course partition means disjoint orbits the set S is part partitioned into various orbits under the group action all right and uh, um, uh, so uh, the, the question is how does each orbit look like all right so for that I will have to explain what is meant by the stabilizer of an element um, so you see uh, the idea is to uh, this the set is broken down into various orbits and we would like to think of each orbit completely in a group theoretic way okay the way of doing that is to calculate what is known as a stabilizer of an element. So, uh, so again let me write that down given an element small s in capital S uh, its stabilizer uh, is uh, let me write it as uh, uh, g sub z g sub z uh, is the set of all g in g small g in capital G such that g sub uh, uh, g sub s sorry g dot s equal to s. So these are exactly the elements of g which uh, do not do anything to that given element which which fix that element okay and uh, you can check that this is a subgroup okay g s uh, is a subgroup of g this is a subgroup of the group okay and once uh, we have the notion of the stabilizer um, which is a subgroup uh, then uh, you can describe each orbit the orbit is just the coset space g mod g s mind you g s is only a subgroup it is not a normal subgroup. So g mod g s does not make sense as a quotient group but it of course makes sense 
as a coset space you can either take it as left cosets or right cosets whichever way you want um, um, so uh, so for that I will so I'll, I'll have to explain what the orbit map is so this is exactly uh, uh, what I have written down here so uh, the orbit map the orbit map for an element of S is the map from G to S given by G going to so let me write this O sub S uh, uh, G dot S okay. So uh, this is the orbit map right and uh, you can see that the image the orbit map is precisely the orbit okay the image uh, image of the orbit map uh, for S is exactly the image is exactly capital G dot S which is exactly the orbit of S okay the image of the orbit map is just the orbit okay. So, uh, so in other words uh, this is a surjection onto that subset G dot S which is the orbit okay and in fact uh, uh, so, so we get a surjection uh, G to G dot S via the orbit map I will still write uh, this map as the orbit map because essentially I am I have just uh, taken the image okay in, prin in principle I should denote this by another letter but it is essentially the same map okay I do not want to do that. Uh, so you get a surjective map like this and the question is uh, the fact is that if you now go modulo the stabilizer g sub small s then uh, this induces a bijection of the coset space g mod uh, g sub s with the orbit okay uh, in we we get we get a bijection g mod g s uh, with G dot S. So G sub S is the is the subgroup stabilizer subgroup consisting of elements of uh, the group which fix the element S and G dot S is the orbit. So this is the picture that you get when a group acts on a set the the set is broken down into orbits and each orbit looks like the coset space G modulo stabilizer of uh, an element in that orbit okay of course you know I, I fixed an element uh, S uh, if I had taken any other element the uh, the uh, stabilizer uh, would only change up to a conjugate and uh, still this bijection would hold okay. So um, um, yeah uh, and there is another thing I want to say um, uh, you can also interpret this as a uh, uh, as coming out from an equivalence relation okay. So uh, the the relation of two elements of the set lying in the same orbit is an equivalence relation okay and uh, under this equivalence relation the orbits are precisely the equivalence classes okay. So uh, uh, and and, uh, and you know every equivalence class uh, I, mean, I mean every equivalence relation will partition your set into uh, a disjoint uh, uh, you know uh, into a disjoint collection of subsets which uh, correspond to the equivalence classes okay and uh, these are precisely uh, the orbits this is exactly the partitioning into orbits okay. So I just want to again emphasize that what is happening here is that you are giving the equivalence relation that two elements uh, are equivalent if one can be moved to the other by a group element okay right. So um, alright. So now uh, with this background let me go back and try to explain uh, this uh, this third uh, consequence uh, first of all um, you, you can imagine uh, by comparing this with that that you know uh, I need to uh, think of an action of the fundamental group on the fiber and show that for uh, a fixed point in the fiber okay uh, the fiber is exactly the orbit okay and the stabilizer 
is exactly this okay then this statement would follow uh, from this generality okay so that's what i'm going to do so this is the whole point the point is the fundamental group below uh, at a point acts on the fiber above that's the whole point okay uh, so le let me explain this action of pi 1 capital x comma small x on p inverse x so you see uh, the picture is like this so you so i have here uh, i have x i have the point small x and i have uh, various points above which are all in the fiber over this point and all this is uh, in x tilde so this is the this is the projection p right so this is, this is the so it looks like this roughly now um, so i'll have to explain uh, what first of all i have to show that there is an action okay so uh, uh, so what do i do so i ha i'll have to give you a map from um, pi 1 uh, i have to give you an act action map pi 1 capital x comma uh, small x cross fiber into the fiber i have to define an action map just like uh, just like this okay and uh, what is this action so i start with an element here what is an element here it is uh, homotopy equivalence class of a loop alpha at the point loop at, at the point x so this is alpha okay uh, and in fact it is a homot homotopy equivalence class right um, of course uh, fixed end point homotopy equivalence class with both end points being uh, alpha uh, being x itself okay so this is the point x okay and I take a point in the fiber above so I, I take uh, say x tilde a point in the fiber above and I will tell you what is the new point I am going to get so I am going to tell you uh, uh, what happens when I take this alpha and act on x tilde I have to produce a new point on the fiber right so how am I going to do it I am going to do it by using uh, consequence 2 I am going to use the unique path lifting property okay so what I am going to do so you see I have this path alpha it is a loop I have a point above which has been prescribed to me okay so there is a lifting alpha tilde of this uh, loop to uh, a path starting at x tilde okay so and mind you uh, so I, if I if I get a, a lifting and call that as alpha tilde this this lifting is unique given this alpha this lifting is unique uh, because I fixed the starting point and but notice that the end point of alpha tilde has to be again uh, lying over x that is because alpha tilde is a lift so if I project it down I should get alpha which means that both the initial bo it means also that the end point of alpha tilde should be a point over x namely the end point of alpha tilde is a point in the fiber okay so uh, we define uh, the new point so we, we 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 think of x tilde as going to this new point and what is that new point that is alpha tilde of 1 okay that is the end point of uh, the unique lift alpha tilde which starts at x tilde okay so let me write that down alpha, alpha tilde 1 is equal to end point of the unique lift alpha tilde of alpha starting at x tilde okay so in this way uh, uh, give me a loop below and a point above I am cooking up for you another point okay so uh, the claim is that this is an action the claim is that this is an action first of all that this is well defined is clear because if I replace alpha by another loop that is homotopic to this then uh, if I replace alpha by say alpha prime which is homotopic to alpha then uh, alpha tilde and alpha prime tilde will also be homotopic because uh, the covering homotopy theorem tells you that you can also lift homotopies and that will force that uh, if I replace alpha by alpha prime then alpha tilde and alpha prime tilde will still have the same end point okay so the covering homotopy theorem will tell you that uh, the uh, 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 if you change alpha uh, uh, up to homotopy your uh, 
the, this point uh, is not going to change okay. So uh, that is that is crucial to tell to say that this map is well defined right. Now I will have to tell you that this map is a uh, um, uh, to essentially check that this is an action as I told you I will have to tell you that uh, each element each element uh, uh, of the group uh, should act as a permutation okay. So I will have to tell you that each element of the fundamental group below has to act as a permutation of the fiber p inverse x okay. So let me explain that so I let me take mu sub alpha so mu sub alpha uh, in that notation is uh, the map from p inverse of x to p inverse of x and uh, it is defined by sending x tilde to uh, alpha tilde of 1 okay. Now I need to say that uh, uh, to verify that this is an action I need to say that the each mu sub uh, alpha is uh, a bijective map okay I have to say it is a permutation of p inverse of x. So um, how do I uh, say uh, uh, is surjective it is surjective yeah so this map is surjective uh, for uh, given uh, a point of say x1 tilde in the fiber okay uh, we proceed as follows so you have you have this point x1 tilde um, and what you want is you want to find another point on the fiber which goes to this under this map all right so how do we do it what we do is that uh, we take uh, we take the loop alpha inverse okay we take the loop alpha inverse that is also a loop based at x all right and you take its lift uh, its unique lift which starts at x1 tilde. So what I am going to get is I am going to get uh, I am going to get a uh, path above uh, which is alpha inverse tilde and uh, this is the unique path which is the lifting of alpha inverse to uh, a path starting at x1 tilde and take its end point the end point let me call it as uh, say x2 tilde all right then you can see uh, uh, x2 tilde will go under this map to uh, x1 tilde because why is that so that is because how do I what what will x2 tilde go to it will go to the end point of the unique uh, uh, lift of alpha uh, to a path starting at x2 tilde which turns out to be the inverse of this path and therefore has to end at x1 tilde. So uh, uh, so that that tells you that uh, uh, given an x1 tilde I am able to find an x2 tilde which maps to it okay uh, so let me write that down uh, let x2 tilde be the end point of the unique lift of alpha inverse uh, to uh, uh, starting at starting at uh, x1 tilde okay then uh, mu sub alpha of uh, x2 tilde turns out to be x1 tilde. So this gives you the surjectivity okay then I will tell you about the injectivity so that is also very easily uh, uh, understood uh, mu sub <coughs> alpha is also uh, injective <coughs> and how do I prove that so uh, let me draw another diagram so I have uh, so here is my x this is my x tilde this is p and <coughs> I have this point x I have this uh, <coughs> I have this loop alpha um, and I have to assume that <coughs> if two points uh, x prime tilde and x prime double tilde go to the same point then the points are equal okay. So I assume that I have a point 
x prime tilde and another point uh, x double prime tilde okay and suppose uh, they go to the same point under this map that is mu sub alpha um, of x prime tilde is equal to mu sub alpha of x double prime tilde. So, if you assume this let us see what it means it means <coughs> you so what is the way uh, uh, this map goes uh, given a point in the fiber you take a lift of alpha starting at that point and the end point is what uh, is the point which it goes. So given uh, uh, x prime tilde I take a lift of alpha to <coughs> uh, alpha tilde okay and it goes to a certain point uh, say uh, let me call this as uh, x triple prime tri tilde all right and in the same way uh, I take another lift of alpha but now starting at x double prime tilde and this assumption is that that also ends at uh, x triple prime tilde okay. Uh, mind you I am writing alpha tilde the same alpha tilde but uh, mind you <coughs> these are both these are actually different paths because the starting points are different okay. So if I want to be very strict I should actually label this alpha tilde by uh, if you want x prime tilde and this alpha tilde by x double prime tilde but I am not going to do that it look very uh, it look very complicated okay. Now I will have to show that uh, x prime tilde and x double prime tilde are the same right and uh, uh, I think that is uh, uh, that is quite obvious that is because you see if I uh, if I for go by alpha tilde this alpha tilde and then I go by this the inverse of this okay then I am going to get a path from uh, x prime tilde to x double prime tilde okay that goes to the uh, the uh, to a path which is homotopic to the trivial path okay uh, because the, the composition of these two paths is is just going to give me alpha followed by uh, alpha inverse okay because alpha tilde goes to alpha and this alpha tilde also goes to alpha. So this followed by this in the reverse direction is going to give me alpha followed by alpha inverse which is homotopic to the constant path at x okay that means the constant path at x has the lifting up to homotopy this followed by this okay but there is only one lifting namely the constant path above. So this followed by this must be homotopic to the constant path at x prime tilde and that forces that x double prime tilde has to be x prime tilde that is the argument okay it is again uniqueness of path lifting and the fact that if you have a constant path there is one there is but one lift namely the constant path above nothing else okay. So, uh, so let me write that down uh, so let me if you want uh, let me call this as alpha 1 let me call this as alpha 2 just for uh, clarity and then say uh, we have uh, alpha 1 tilde uh, followed by alpha 2 alpha 2 uh, tilde inverse uh, lie uh, uh, is a lifting of uh, uh, alpha alpha inverse uh, which is which is homotopic <coughs> to the constant path at x which is the identity element for the fundamental group it is it is homotopic class is the identity element of the fundamental group below uh, uh, and hence and hence uh, has to be equal to the unique lift uh, constant path at x prime tilde uh, uh, above okay. So that is going to tell you that uh, uh, so this will imply that x prime tilde is the same as x double prime tilde so that that finishes the injectivity okay. So what I have established is that this is indeed an action the, the fundamental group below acts on the fiber it permutes the elements of the fiber okay and uh, now to tell you that the fiber is precisely uh, uh, 
uh, the, the, the so I will have to tell you two more things I will have to tell you that uh, the uh, take any point on the fiber okay uh, say x tilde uh, the my first claim is that the uh, the whole orbit I mean the orbit of that point is a whole fiber okay. So in other words I am saying that there is only one orbit okay and uh, whenever a group acts on a set which has only one orbit it means that any element of the set can be moved to any other element okay and this is uh, uh, this is what uh, we call as a transitive action okay. So what I am trying to say is that the action of the fundamental group is transitive so you get uh, all the points in the fiber are equivalent okay so you get only one uh, orbit and that is the whole fiber and why is that true that is also uh, because of uh, you know arc wise connectedness of x tilde okay. So uh, note that uh, uh, the orbit of x tilde is all of all of uh, the fiber why is that true because uh, you so, so if you want <coughs> you know let me draw another diagram so here is uh, here is x tilde and suppose you give me some other point uh, let us say x prime tilde okay um, this is this is capital X tilde and this is the projection T onto the space below which is uh, X and these are all points lying over small x okay. Now what I can do is that since capital X tilde is uh, arc wise connected I can find a gamma a, a path gamma that connects X tilde and X prime tilde. Now I push that path down I will get a loop <coughs> um, let me uh, so so I will get a loop here let me call this so this loop will be this loop will be uh, uh, gamma followed by P P circle gamma that will be a loop based at X okay and the lifting of this P circle gamma is precisely this gamma with initial point X tilde and what is the final point it is X prime tilde. So what does it mean for uh, uh, given uh, uh, X prime tilde in the fiber uh, if gamma is a path on X tilde from X tilde to small X prime tilde then you see let me write this down mu sub P circle gamma the equivalence class of the point X tilde is exactly X prime tilde okay. So the moral of the story is that uh, the whole fiber is a single orbit all right and I told you uh, that um, uh, uh, the group model of the stabilizer is bijective with, re with respect to the or orbit so I will have to just tell you that the stabilizer is precisely the subgroup of the fundamental group below which is the image of the uh, fundamental group above okay so I will do, do that and then we are done. So le let me write that down. Uh, what is the uh, what is the stabilizer of uh, uh, the point X tilde what is the stabilizer of the point X tilde it is all those uh, alpha in the fundamental group such that uh, alpha acting on X tilde uh, is equal to X tilde okay. Uh, which is the set of all uh, elements alpha in the fundamental group below such that uh, mu sub uh, sub alpha of x tilde is equal to x tilde okay. Now try to understand what this means so again let me draw another diagram um, so here is uh, uh, here is X tilde so here is P here is X and uh, so I have point uh, small x here I have point X tilde above it <coughs> and I am trying to calculate the stabilizer of this point X tilde. So uh, what is in the stabilizer suppose 
uh, an element alpha is in the stabilizer it means that when I take the unique lift of this alpha namely alpha tilde starting at x tilde it will also end at x tilde okay. So it means that alpha tilde is going to look like this it also has to end at x tilde because where it ends is what is where x tilde has to go to under the action okay <coughs> and saying that it does not x tilde x tilde stays put means that this is going to also be a loop above okay but then what is the image of this loop the image of this loop is just alpha and where is this this is in the fundamental group above okay so what you have proved is that anything in the stabilizer comes from a loop above okay which means you have shown that the stabilizer is precisely the image of the fundamental group above of course conversely if I take uh, any element in uh, any loop above uh, it is going to be in the stabilizer obviously okay. So you can see that this is just uh, p lower star of uh, pi 1 of capital X tilde small x tilde okay. So uh, therefore we get uh, we get the following uh, um, we get the following identification which is what we set out to understand uh, namely uh, the uh, uh, the group which is a fundamental group phase at the point small x below modulo the stabilizer which is the image of the fundamental group above this treated thought of as a coset space okay is uh, bijective to the orbit of x tilde which is nothing but p inverse of x okay. So uh, each each fiber is just identified with the coset space of the fundamental group below by the image of the fundamental group above okay and uh, again let me repeat that this implies that if uh, x capital X tilde is a universal covering then this is trivial so it tells you that every fiber uh, is uh, just a copy of the fundamental group below the fiber over each point is a copy of the fundamental group based at that point okay uh, so that that explains uh, so that that explains uh, uh, why in the case of uh, uh, you know uh, the complex structure on the cylinder on the or on the uh, or the complex structure on the torus the inverse image of a point uh, was uh, bijective to the fundamental group of the of the respective the cylinder or the torus okay so it is a very general thing that happens in any covering space uh, in, in this sense okay so, uh, so we will stop here.